திருச்சிற்றம்பலம் காரைக்கால் அம்மையார் த டிவோட்டி ஹூ ஃபுல்ஃபில்ஸ் த நீட்ஸ் ஆஃப் சிவயோகிஸ் பை சப்ளைங் தேம் வித் ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் மில்க் அண்ட் அதர் ஃபுட் becomes adorable to even the primal couple bhava and bhavani and by their grace attains emancipation there is a story in this context listening to which the true glory of devotion is experienced and liberation attained in the bounteous kaveri delta was situated a golden city by name karaikal its huge mansions were storehouses for valuable gems gold and pearls um piran de moli vaindra binnalla kaadal sirandu A wealthy vaisya called Dhanadatha amassed great wealth and spent substantial portions from it to serve Siva Bhaktas. However, the lack of an issue made him see all his riches as an inauspicious burden and hence resorted to the lord for his grace soon the lord blessed them with a daughter who came to restore auspiciousness to his wealth hoping that by her advent not only his wealth but his whole clan would be purified he named her punitavati she grew by stages like the kalpa creeper in the heavenly grove nandana wearing sparkling ornaments of gold she enticed everyone's heart with her pretty looks dhanadatta smeared the triple stripes of basma on her forehead daily for a long life and prosperity soon she came of age and her father performed her marriage with paramadatta who seemed a perfect match to her in beauty and wealth the couple shone like the celestial love gods rati and manmatha unable to be separated from his daughter dharmadatta persuaded paramadatta's parents to have the son in law settle in his own the place punitavati took after her parents and charity became synonymous with her once a brahmin gave two large sized mangoes to paramadatta who in turn sent it to his house asking punitavati to save it for dinner after some time shiva came there as a yogi and begged for food punitavati had only some rice to offer the yogi said that it would not suffice so punitavati went inside and brought one of the mangoes given by paramadatta and served it to the yogi the yogi ate heartily and blessed her profusely and went away paramadatta returned from his business for dinner punitavati lovingly served him the fine delicacies she had cooked and gave him the one remaining mango he relished the fruit above all which tasted delicious expressing the same he requested her to bring the other fruit also she was caught in a dangerous fix she quickly entered the kitchen prayed for the lord's immediate intervention by shiva's grace a fruit of similar feature fell into her palms how relieved she was expressing gratitude she hurried to her husband with the lord's gift not aware of what happened Paramadatta tasted it and found it to be extraordinary. He promptly suspected that this was not the same as he had given. Looking at her, he asked, "Whence this fruit of nectarine taste?" She replied hesitantly, "From the Lord Shiva." Upon this, he challenged her, "If it is true, fetch me another." She went inside and repeated the prayer. Lo, she was blessed with another fruit. what was impossible for the lord the bestower of four kinds of fruits to all dharma artha kama and moksha with mixed feelings she placed the fruit in her husband's hand when it suddenly vanished into thin air paramadatta was seized with great consternation and astonishment enough to what has transpired so far let me not sin further by treating her as my wife 
Thinking thus, he resolved to forsake the place and live afar. After a few days, he set out of the place on the pretext of undertaking business overseas. Paramadatta spent a long time in distant shores and amassed wealth and he reached the Pandya country, got himself wedded to a Vaisya girl. Soon they had a baby whom he named after Punitavati. Dhanadatta grew anxious about the son-in-law and sent out search parties. After some time, they located him in the Pandya land. Dhanadatta sent Punitavati in a palanquin followed by his kinsmen to her husband. Learning her arrival, Paramadatta thought that the best course for him was to seek pardon of Punitavati. Accompanied by his second wife and daughter, he went in advance and fell at her feet. He spoke to her with reverence. I take refuge in you. Should you remain here, I will have to leave the place with them. Punitavati's heart sank. She became transfixed. Gathering her nerves, she replied, It is for your sake that I have carried and cared for this burden of a body. If it is not used to you, let it be consigned to Shiva. Then, addressing the Lord, she played aloud, O Lord Shiva, let this immaculate form give way to a ghostly form. She shook off her youthful form by yogic method and by the grace of God atrophied into a skeletal form that was highly despicable and even threatening in appearance. But she was blessed with a new talent of singing. Hymns of praise to the Lord gushed forth from the fountain of her heart. The special form of poetry called Arpudatru Andadi, a garland as it were, of stanzas. She visited shrine after shrine of the Lord who put to rout the farcical Daksha Yagna. Soon she reached the sacred foot of Mount Kailasa. Intent upon reaching the summit, she desired to scale it without touching the hallowed abode with her feet. She could achieve it by walking upside down, her feet held straight above, while her palms served as feet, a rare yogic feet indeed. Mother Parvati, seated in the loving company of Mahadeva, watched in amazement Punitavati's novel pilgrimage and exclaimed, Strange indeed is the pursuit of this devil. Her form, though contemptible, her yogic power seems remarkable, an astounding enterprise for sure. Shiva replied with a tone of pride, She is our beloved mother. She fed our devotees. To come here, she has undertaken this painful adventure. So saying, Shiva rose from his seat and walked towards the approaching devotee to receive her. How are you, mother? He asked her with a voice brimming with affection. Still in the same posture, paid her obeisance to Mother Parvati and told Shiva that she was blessed by the rare darshana. The Lord asked, What is your wish? Let us fulfill it right away. She replied, O Deva Deva, enable me to escape the vicious cycle of birth and death. Let my devotion to your feet be constant and continuous. I am dying to see your Ananda Tandavam. I have no other bestowing the state of you Shiva see my Tandavam he kept her in his shrine. on earth. Go Watching there in the large go. glorious dance and other sports, she sang hymns with metrical forms depicting dance and lived in the Lord's presence for eternity. The glory of Bhakti is truly hard to cognize. Let us pay our obeisance to this great mother, Kare Kalamayar and seek her blessings. Trichitrambalam Mutta Mutti Taravall Mughil Men Mulayar Umay Panga Mutta Mutti Taravall Mughil Men Mulayar Yeah.
நீ ஆடும் 